there, fellow home dogs. <laughs> um, my name is Carrie. I'm an artist, and today I'm going to be bringing you a totally free and totally awesome painting class. Ah. So the painting we're going to be doing today is hopefully going to turn out somewhat like this. <laughs> And what's going to make this very unique is that today we're going to be painting, drawing, and painting with a spoon. There's also some other materials you'll need, and we're going to go over those in just a second. But clear space, get your painting face on, let's go. So before we get started today, let's just go over um, the materials you're going to need for our little class today. Um, number one, I want to say it's kind of obvious, but you're going to need some type of surface to paint on, whether it's um, construction paper or cardstock. This is actually um, a type of watercolor, watercolor paper um, that can be used for all types of painting, even though we're not technically working with watercolors today, it still works great. Um, you can also just use a basic canvas if you would like. I know a lot of people like to paint um, directly on canvas boards or actual canvas where it's wrapped around the edges, you know what I'm saying? And also, first thing we're going to be doing is drawing and outlining today. So for that, we're going to need a pencil. Mechanical pencil, a lot of um, artists say that that's a big no-no. I use basically only mechanical pencil, so I'm a rule breaker, here we go. <laughs> and also a ruler of some type, um, just a one foot ruler works fine. A spoon. This is the very interesting bit, um, as you'll see why in a second. Um, plastic works fine, metal is fine too, just whatever spoon, just a regular, um, not a huge soup spoon, but just, I don't know, like just a basic <laughs> eating utensil spoon that's like a normal, normal size. Okay, so that's going to be for the drawing portion today. Then, for our painting portion, we are going to need some paints. Um, you can do whatever color or colors you have available, it's totally fine. You can pretty much use any color you want with this since we're doing um, a butterfly, and butterflies can be basically any color. Even if it's not realistic, you can do, like if you want to do a pink butterfly, I don't know if there are pink butterflies in existence, <laughs> I'm sure there are, but like a green, like neon butterfly or something, you can do whatever color you want. Also glow paint is really cool to do, with, do this with. Um, but if you want to do the version I'm doing today, which is going to be the rainbow butterfly, these are the colors you're going to need. You're going to need some type of blue. Any type is fine. Um, acrylic is what I use. We're going to be using acrylic paint today. I wouldn't recommend watercolor for this or any other. Um, tempera is also okay, but I'm, again, I'm going to be using acrylic paint or, um, the crafter's paint. You know, those kind that come in like the little... Um, apple barrel tubes. Okay, I had to check. Like, the, these kind are also fine, um, because this is also a type of acrylic paint. I had to think of, is it called apple barrel? I guess there are other brands, but that's the kind I always use. Um, so you can also use that, but you're going to need some type of blue paint, some type of red paint. Again, I also have this in red, which is totally fine. Entertain interchangeable. Some type of yellow, and some type of white. And then also some type of black. Um, I actually don't use acrylic, um, I mean like these kinds of black paint, so this is kind of like a house um, paint color sample that I use for a lot of my crafts, um, and it's just plain black. And if you don't have any black, you can also use um, a black marker or like, um, like a Sharpie, like these are my favorite um, pens of all time, these Sharpie pens, um, painting pens, those are awesome to use too. Um, or you can, again, just use paint since we're painting today. And then you'll also want to have um, around um, like a napkin or a towel or something and a water cup to clean your brush out in. And then, of course, again, I want to say obviously, but maybe it's not so obvious, <laughs> a brush to paint with, of course. And then also, a lot of times we forget about this, something to mix your paint with. Um, you can either use, I'm going to be using these um, craft sticks or popsicle sticks. Um, you can also use a paint spatula or even something like a plastic butter knife or a metal, just like a reusable butter knife also works really great, just using the end of it, because um, this is what we're going to be using to mix our colors. And of course I almost forgot something to actually mix your colors on. You can use um, anything like this palette is what I'm going to be using. Um, I really, I have a wooden one too, but I really like um, these acrylic ones because they're a lot easier to clean. You can also use... Um, these little ones too. 
Um, I get these a lot at the dollar store for when I teach classes and stuff. Um, these are really nice to have around too. And that should be all the materials you need. If there are more things along the way, trust me, I'll let you know. <laughs> So we're gonna get started with the drawing portion. And again, I usually do, um, when I do teach classes, um, either online or in person, when I hand out um, kits online, a lot of times I will have um, a pre-made canvas already good to go with the drawing on it, so there's no drawing required. But since this is a free class that I wanted to offer, I obviously can't provide <laughs> any materials directly to you for free. So today we're going to be learning, this is gonna be interesting, trust me, how to draw <laughs> Our butterfly with the use of only a ruler and a spoon well, and a pencil <laughs> and make sure you have an eraser too because as I will probably make it a lot of mistakes so don't feel bad if you make mistakes too so to start out we're going to take our ruler um, and we're gonna go a little bit down from the top of your paper um, I say about this much I don't maybe about maybe like two inches down or so it's not really exact um, we're going to try to center it. We're going for eight inches across. So we kind of want to center that around maybe this area of the page. And we're going to go ahead and put a dot at the eight. Above the eight, I mean. And try not to move it like I just did. <laughs> and across um, the zero. The zero point there, I guess it's not technically one. And four. Honestly, that always confused me in school. Like, is this supposed to, like, this is one inch, but like this point is zero and this point is one. So it's like when you're trying to measure, you're like, put it at the one. No, I mean the zero. I don't know. Anyway, step two, we are going to take our spoon. Um, I would flip it over like this. So it's a little bit easier to hang on to. And we're going to put the tip of it. Again, this is going to be very interesting. Right on this point. You're kind of going to put it at an angle down. See, I'm holding the spoon like this. You're going to put your finger on it. And we're going to trace the edge of the spoon just about halfway. Not quite to where it starts to curve back in. Just as far as the curve goes outward of the spoon. If that makes sense. About to there. So when you take it away, you should have a curve that looks a lot like this. And then we're also going to go on ahead and do that on the other side. These are going to be our wing points, the top wing points, if that helps you. <laughs> Again, hold it at a bit of an angle like this, put your finger on it. We're going to go just about down to where it starts to curve, right before it curves inward, I mean. Just like that. Now, taking our ruler again. We're going to go from the top of this point we made in the middle and going to make a mark about, try to make it as straight as you can, but it, it doesn't have to be totally perfect, that's fine. <laughs> I know mine's definitely not going to turn out perfect. And we're going to put a dot about two inches down from that. Again, I'm trying to keep it centered. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to take our spoon again and we're going to put the tip of it now on that point. Again, try to center it as best as you can. And we're actually going to trace the whole edge of the spoon now. Just watch as I do this around past where it starts to curve in and down the stem a little bit. It doesn't have to be all the way. And then, and then it's hard when you try to do it with your other hand. <laughs> Put it around maneuver your finger if you have to and down the stem of it a bit because now when we remove it it's gonna look like this it's totally gonna look like a spoon <laughs> for now just wait it's gonna be magical in a minute so <laughs> next we're gonna take our ruler again we're going to go on ahead and we're gonna go from this point down About at this angle it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit higher or a little bit lower this is actually going to be the head of our butterfly and this is going to be the upper part of the wing so we're going to try to connect that as best we can from there to there like this 
that actually turned out a lot better than I expected, <laughs> okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Try to keep it even on both sides as best you can. Um, but again, totally fine if it's not perfect. And all the way up to that point like that. It actually looks really nice. <laughs> I am in shock with myself. Okay, so <laughs> I'm a painter, not a drawer. That's why I was like, we need something to assist us in this. And the spoon is working out pretty well. So now, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and go from this point, put the end of your ruler there, and we're going to try to create um, a very, not straight, but somewhere along an angle of like, say this, right in here. And we're going to make a dot at the three inch mark. I'm actually going to make that a little bit wider of an angle. See, it's not completely straight, but it's just a tiny bit of an angle this way. And we're going to put a dot right there on the three inch mark. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Again, put your dot there. Not completely straight, but not all the way out here either. Somewhere in between. And again, this is going to be really hard to make it even on both sides, but... Don't worry again if it's totally like asymmetrical because I've actually painted a lot of butterflies in my day and pretty much every um, photo of a butterfly I've worked off of I found that butterflies are really asymmetrical. There is, I've never seen one picture that I painted as a ref, used as a refer, reference picture I mean, that I painted off of that the wings have been perfectly symmetrical. There's always like minor differences in between each of them. So, I mean, that's just something in interesting to know about. Nobody's, literally nobody's perfect, not even these beautiful butterflies <laughs> that can do so much more than us and fly away and pollinate and do all their things. So now we're going to go on ahead and take our spoon again. And we're going to put this point, you can move your ruler out of the way, <laughs> um, kind of not on the very tip of the spoon, see if you can see it here, but kind of like down in this area about not an exact science or anything but just about in that area and line it up to that point now we're going to kind of awkwardly because I'm using my right hand right now not my left we're going to go on ahead and make from about the tip of the spoon all the way around the edge of it so that we get this kind of a curve right at that point. And then, again, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So, not from the tip of the spoon, but about to this area right here. We're just using it kind of as an aid to help us um, make these curves that can be a little bit difficult. Around. Like that. As best I could. <laughs> next step we're going to take our ruler we're going to go ahead and connect these you can also freehand it if you like doing that um, but I'm just trying to make it as simple <laughs> as possible and then you can kind of use your eraser to clean up the edges if you need to because I definitely need to <laughs> okay and then we're going to do the same thing on this side just trying to make it as straight as possible. And those curves. I'm gonna clean that one up a little bit too. You could also use from the end of those curves, you could have done like something like this if you wanted to like freehand a little bit. That would look kind of cool. But again, I'm just trying to show you the simplest way that I possibly can for this. Now we're gonna take our spoon again. We're gonna go on ahead and line up where the edge of wherever you did this at. We're gonna head ahead, go on ahead, oh, if I can talk today, and line it up to kind of about where the end of your, your um, curve of your spoon is. And angle it down just a little bit, see how I'm holding it a little bit at this kind of an angle. And we're gonna 
going to go ahead and trace that curve just to the tip of the spoon, not all the way around, like that. And then you can go on ahead and connect those a little bit better if you want to. Clean it up a bit, just use your eraser, do what you need. And then do the same thing on this side. Depending on which hand you're using, one side might be a little bit easier to maneuver around than the other because it's a little bit easier for me to do it this way than, or, you know. <laughs> so line it up and go just about to the tip, a little bit past the tip maybe of the spoon. So we get a curve that looks like this. And then again, you can kind of make a little connection there if you need to a little bit that's fine okay now from here we're going to use the spoon two times more so line it back up to where it was you know where you made that line and just come down with it a little bit see how I'm getting this like curve of this to match up with this but it's kind of going more down at an angle I'm holding the spoon like Again, my hands in the way. <laughs> this way now. It should, the curve of it should really match up really well there. So you don't want it to be all the way down like this. And you don't want it to be too flat. So you see how I'm lining up the curve of the line I already have with the curve of the tip of the spoon. And then that'll kind of help you gauge where your angle needs to be. And then again, we're going to trace the outline of it just down to about this point where the spoon starts to curve back in and we're going to do again the same thing on the other side you guessed it <laughs> trying to line that up with the curve as best i can and remember butterfly wings are not naturally sy symmetrical so it's totally okay if our sides aren't perfectly the same because that would be kind of boring anyway i think <laughs> now we're going to do it again and this time we do kind of want it to be um, more flat so it might not match up perfectly with the curve of your spoon but that's okay because we can erase a bit um, but we want it to be pretty much at a straight line and we're going to go again just around and this time you can go a little bit over the curve of your spoon right here to write about where it meets the stem so we get a line that looks like this. And then again, repeating this on the other side. Spoon at about a horizontal. Matching up just as good as you can. And just about over that curve. Yeah. Okay, this looks really awesome so far, you guys. I'm kind of in shock of how good this is going so far. I know I keep saying that I'm like in shock that it's going so well, but you know, I only practiced this once before I did this video, so I was like, I this might end up being a plane crash. So <laughs> here we go. Now the next part, this is kind of fun. We're going to create what will be the tail of our butterfly. You know, like butterflies have a little tail kind of, I don't know, the tail of the body. <laughs> So we're going to, you get to decide if you want it like a really long tail, a really short tail. We're going to use the end of the spoon now. And depending on how your spoon is shaped, yours might end up a little bit different than mine. But most spoons do come to like, you know, an end at some, somehow, some way, somehow. Unless you have like a really strange, fancy looking thing. But I'm going to go in ahead and I'm going to position it. See how I'm positioning it. We're going to go off of the end of this to create the rest of the body. And I'm going to go about maybe this long. Looks good to me. So hold it in place. You can flip your spoon over too if you need to. I'm going to do it this way so it's as flat as I can make it. So we're going to go on ahead and trace. Oh, mine's wobbling a lot. <laughs> the outline of our spoon to make the body. Let's go. Right. 
now we're going to go on ahead and connect this to the body using our ruler or freehanding if you like. Um, just kind of make it, you can make it a little bit wider, a little bit shorter. I'm going to go on ahead and make it a little bit wider because that way when we fill the body in, I mean the wings in, we'll have like more painting space. Um, so I'm just going to kind of follow this curve, make a line like that about as wide as I can. And I'm going to try to match it up with the other side. Again, it's probably not going to be perfect, but that's good enough for me. <laughs> Honestly, that's good enough for all of us. <laughs> so, I actually kind of have a long tail on this, but I kind of like it. It's almost like moth-like. I like that. Let's see how it definitely looks like the shape of a spoon now. But I wanted to make, um, you know, I wanted to make sure you knew that you could adjust the tail. So that you can make it this short if you really wanted to. You can make it, like, really long. Again, the longer it is, the more it almost looks like a moth than a butterfly. But, you know. Moths are actually pretty cool too. I have a friend that got um, a tattoo of a moth and it's pretty awesome, so just saying. Um, and moths are actually really cool if you do use the glow paint. You can make it look more moth-like with the glow paint too. Not that moths glow in the dark or anything, but I feel like sometimes they should just because they're like, especially the Luna moths, how they like have that glow, like green glow to them. It's like very cool. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is make the curve. Um, we're going to make an outline for the inside of the wings. You'll understand in a second. <laughs> Just hang in there with me. You might not have understood anything to this point, but that's totally okay too. There is a method to the madness here, I promise. <laughs> so back to where we made this curve with our spoon. We're just gonna bring it down a little bit so you see enough on just a little bit of white space. You don't wanna bring it down too far. I mean, you can, um, but then it's not, we're not gonna have as much room to paint um, with color in the body if we bring it too far down. So that's why I'd rather keep it up here. And I'm just gonna make it so that I see just a little bit like less than a centimeter of white space on each side of it. And I'm gonna hold it down as good as I can. And we're going to go ahead and follow this curve again. Just down to about where the spoon curves back in. Ta -da. And it's okay if it's really close to the edge. I actually would rather it be really close to the edge. Um, you'll see later when we do the painting portion. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do the same thing on this side. You can bring it to where you made that mark before and just bring it a little bit down so you see enough white space. On each side, I have to lean over to look at it there. <laughs> and follow that curve all the way around. Just about to where the spoon starts to curve back in. Just like that. And now, we're going to go ahead and do kind of like how we did before. Um, we're going to follow this line and keep it curving still. So now we're going to hold it down like this. Kind of try to match up where you just made that line. And we're going to curve it around the bottom of the spoon now. Just a little bit. somewhat, you see there I kind of burnt, that's okay, around the edge of it, and then here too, and then you can clean up your lines as you go, just trying to do our best with the lines, and then do the same thing on this side, again hold it to where it was, kind of follow that down to the end, we're going to make a curve around, Next, we're going to go on ahead and connect these points with the body. Both of those points. So you can use, I would recommend using the ruler for this part because that's kind of a lot. I mean, it's a long line to draw freehanded if you really want to make it straight. Um, but it doesn't have to be perfectly straight either, so that's totally okay. You to kind of see see this one I did really close to the edge um, which is fine and this one is a little bit farther away which again is also fine 
you can also see here I got like kind of where the curve started to come down and then my line went straight so there's like a little bit of a ridge there um we actually kind of want that um if you already erased and kind of tried to correct that that's totally cool too but um I'm going to prefer doing that with my lines because then that kind of gives a little bit of a definition to the butterfly's body um later on we go to paint it too and it'll kind of just make it look just a little bit more realistic because butterflies do kind of have these like ridges that kind of curve in and out in their wings so I'm going to go ahead and do that with this on the bottom too and you just connect it just like horizontally straight across for this part maybe even angle down just a little bit if you want to so we're just trying to connect this to the body part See, now we have these inside parts of the wings, which is where we're going to be doing the painting at. Yay, it's starting to look like a butterfly! <laughs> so we're almost there with the drawing portion, I know. Not as fun as the painting portion, probably, but... Oh, you gotta do what you gotta do. So now we're going to go ahead and do a curve on um, the bottom part of the wings. So we're going to go ahead and kind of, you know, where we took this and we did this, we're just gonna pull it in a little bit also with just about a little bit more white space than we did on the top and go from just the tip of the spoon just around like that just a little bit of a curve and doing the same thing on this side I kind of like to match it up with where we did that first line and then pull it back a little bit that kind of helps me keep it as straight as I can around. So now we have these two nice curves. And now we're going to do just like we did up here. We're going to bring it, or actually I don't know where we did this at. Oh, we did it on the outside of the wing where we brought the spoon like this, bring it down. We're going to do the same thing with this line. Kind of hold it there and bring it down. And again, just a little bit of white space, not too much. You get your finger around it. Like that. That looks pretty good. Then on this side. Just trying to line it up. And make our little curve. On the bottom of the spoon. All right, awesome. Now we're gonna do just like how we did on the top and we made um, these connections with the, um, the body part. We're gonna do the same thing here, just using the ruler and just kind of draw it straight across on the top parts and connect it a little bit there. Just drawing it straight across. Then on the bottom, just do a little bit of an angle too much of an angle, but just to get it up there, and kind of fix your lines up a bit. And this one I'm going to have a little bit more of a deeper line on this because I made my curve a little bit too much, but that's alright. Fine with me. And uh, although there is still one thing left, of course, all butterflies need the little antennas <laughs> or antennae, however you call it. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, you can make yours as long or as short as you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and make mine uh, about one and a half inches. So just use your ruler and just, you know, however of an angle you want. The antennas can be, really, they can be more versatile. I'm just going to make a dot there. The line. There's one antenna. This side one and a half inches. And the angle doesn't have to be the same same on both of them because you know butterflies antennas they move a lot and you could even if you wanted to just make a dot and you could do like a curvy line. You could do or like a wavy line I mean or the, or you could use your spoon and you can make you know another curvy kind of antenna. The antenna are really up to you. I kind of just did the basic version here, but, you know. 
So, here we go. We have our butterfly. You can go on ahead and move your ruler and your pencil and your spoon just out of the way. You can work on, you can take a moment to pause and clean up your lines if you want to, if you want to do a little bit of erasing and whatnot. But here we have our butterfly outline ready. And so, you know what that means? We are ready to paint, home dogs. <laughs> So let's get our paints out and get ready to start doing that. So before we actually get putting paint to paper, I'm going to put this aside just for now. Um, we need to mix our paints up. If you're going to be doing the rainbow butterfly with me, again, you can totally just use whatever colors you want. If you want to just use, you know, a basic, just want to use like orange straight out of the tube and paint. Um, along with me, you're totally welcome to do that too. Um, but I'm going to show you how to mix up your colors and do a rainbow butterfly. So if you're here for to do that with me, we're going to go ahead and make sure you have your paint mixing devices. Um, if you're gonna use these or um, a spatula or a knife or something like that. And then we're going to go ahead and get our paints out and at the ready. We don't need the black just yet, um, but we're going to need these fine colors. Yes. And we're going to have a mini lesson in how to mix up a color wheel. So when we go to make a color wheel, if you're not already familiar with what a color wheel is or looks like, these are our three main primary colors. And we mix each of these in different combinations to get our secondary colors. Um, our secondary colors are green, purple, and orange. And of course, then we can mix those with the primaries again or the secondary colors together to get um, what is often called the tertiary colors or the intermediary um, colors, which would be like your um, kind of like a, like teals or your like yellow orange, you know, those types of um, things, but we're not going to be doing that exactly today. Just working with primaries and secondaries. So get your mixing, um, whatever you want to use to mix colors with or on out. And we're going to go on ahead and make like a circle. Um, or if you do have like one of these, just do um, one in each of these and we can kind of pretend it's a circle. <laughs> But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to do, starting with red at the top. It actually doesn't matter what color is at the top, but I feel like doing red at the top today, so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to do um, kind of like a bigger glob of red at the top. And then on either side of it, we're just going to do like half that amount, just a little bit on either side of that red. So we got three red dots, not a perfect circle but it's a curve. <laughs> and now, next we're going to do the yellow. So, we're gonna put a big glob of yellow right here next to the red. And then we're gonna put a little bit of yellow on top of this red. And then right under, we're going to make another one here. Kind of at the bottom of our circle. Yellow aside, yellow aside, and now blue. Blue, we're gonna, that's interesting, I got a little bit of pink there on my bottle, okay. <laughs> so I wonder how that happened. So we're going to put um, a bigger glob of blue here in between our red and yellow. See if you can get it to squeeze out. Man, maybe I'm running out of blue. <laughs> oh, splat. That's always fun. Oh yeah. Okay. And then, oi. So, <laughs> it's a good thing this table, I don't care what gets on it because that would have been a mess. And now we're gonna put a little bit of blue on top of this dot and a little bit of blue on top of this dot. A little bit of an explosion there at the end too. Again, that's always fun. <laughs> so we're gonna take each of our mixing sticks and one 
at a time with these that we put, you know, double colors on, we're going to mix them up with a different stick. Or if you're using um, like a reusable stick or a knife or something, you can just wipe it off um, over on your paper towel or your towel um, and then come back and use it again for the next color. But we don't want to like mix, intermix these, you know what I mean? So I'm going to start here with my yellow and red. You kind of want to like scroll it up. Mixing it together like ketchup and mustard. <laughs> and mine's kind of running into my red a lot, but that's that's totally fine. I'll just kind of scrape it away from that. Painting is a messy, messy hobby, let's be honest. <laughs> oh, and even if you're a perfectionist, you can't help but your colors running together every once in a while. <laughs> Alright, so that's going to be that. I'm going to put this over on my um, paper towel. Actually, I can bring it in here. I'm just going to set that there to the side, and I'm going to get a new one of these. And next one, I'm going to do this blue and yellow together. This is the one that I do this with in classes with well, kids and adults, and they're always like, Wow, it's green. <laughs> I don't know why that one always seems really magical. Like it's not magic, you guys. It's just it's art and color theory. Ah, uh, fun times. And then our last one, which is going to be the red and blue. And this one, you may not be as as amazed as you're mixing it because it's going to, as always, this always happens, turn into kind of what looks like a brown, almost poopy mess. <laughs> Just saying. So that's because this is actually supposed to be purple, or violet, as we call it in art. And because, for whatever reason, when we mix um, red and blue together, because they're kind of dark, um, colors on their own when we mix them together it makes it pretty dark and really hard to tell um, what it color it actually is when it's on the palette or the paper so what we do is we add a little bit of white to this one just a little bit just like how we did before just add a little bit of a white glob on top just like that that's all you really need if you want a really light purple though you can add more white to it and then we're gonna mix that all up together. And then, ah uh, what do you know? Now you can tell it looks like purple or violet. A lot easier to tell, isn't it? That's always such a calming thing to be mixing colors like that. Alright, so now you can see that we have a bit of a color wheel, although mine's not really a wheel because it's a little bit messy. <laughs> it looks like it got disoriented along the way, but you know, where we have our red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, or violet, which is always the troublesome one. <laughs> so these are the colors we're going to be using in our butterflies. Um, if there's Right now, I would pause and take a moment if there are any colors that you don't really like the look of them too well. If you want to be like, oh, my orange could use a little bit more yellow. I mean, it looks a little bit too much like the red. You could go on ahead and you could add um, some more yellow to it and mix it up some more. Or what I'm actually going to do is my green is a little bit like bluish green and I want it to be a little bit more um, brighter green, so I'm going ahead and I'm going to add some more yellow to that before we get started with actually painting. I'm just going to reuse this stick again. I'm going to wipe it off a bit though. And I'm just going to mix that in a little bit better. So it's just a little bit of a lighter, more yellow green, not too much blue in it this time. That looks a lot better. That's more like what I was going for. Still kind of dark. Still kind of dark, but it'll work with what we're doing today. You could also add some more white if you wanted to add some white to any of these colors. Even your primary ones, if you wanted to make like a lighter blue, which 
you know what, I think I might actually do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some white to my regular blue and make it a little bit lighter. Because why not? And I'm just gonna use the other end of the stick. I'm trying not to get the paint all over my fingers <laughs> as I go, but if I do, whatever. <laughs> hey, it happens, finger painting. <laughs> See, now I have like a lighter blue here. It's still blue, but it's a lighter blue. It's still a primary color, but it's a lighter primary color. And again, you can just pause and take a second and check out your wheel and see if there's anything else you really wanna change around with it. Um, but once you're happy and satisfied with your color mixing, we can go on ahead and get started with our painting. So this is probably going to be the most fun and relaxing and therapeutic part of the process. I'm gonna get my paints kind of out of the way because I don't really need them anymore now that I've got my palette ready. We're going to get ready and bring our butterfly back in. And get all situated here. When I like to paint, I do kind of like to have my palette. Um, sometimes I put it on top of my pictures, <laughs> but I'm going to try to keep it a little bit to the side today, just so you can see what I'm doing here. Make sure I get it, keep it in frame. And I'm sure you can also probably see my water cup over here, my towel. But actually, I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to flip this towel inside out so that I have a clean surface. Put this all around here. That I can use my brush with. So before we get started with painting anything, anytime, look, I've already got green paint all over me. Blech. Okay, <laughs> it washes off, it's fine. <laughs> we always want to um, get our brush wet before we start any kind of painting. I don't know why, it's just a rule of life. <laughs> Sometimes your brushes do, um, especially if they've been used a lot or if they are brand new, they get a little bit crunchy and you don't really want a crunchy brush when you're painting. Gross. Crunchy is for potato chips, not a paintbrush, okay. And then we're going to go ahead and just wipe the excess moisture off. So now you should feel it, you can feel it on your hand even. It should be really nice and soft and smooth. All right, now I'm going to come back over to my picture here. Put this off to the side as much as I can. And I'm going to start doing my um, rainbow effect as you probably saw in um, the beginning of the video. So, or you can also do, like I said before, if you wanna do one solid color, you can go on ahead and do that. We're going to fill in these inner lines of these four kind of quadrants, if you will, of the butterfly. So if you wanna do a solid color, that's the air four areas you're gonna be coloring in. So, but since I'm doing the rainbow version, I'm going to start with purple along this edge on the bottom. Not too much. I'm gonna kind of do like a strip of it, like across like this. If you see how much of it I'm doing. I'm just get it as close to the line. If you get a little bit over the line, that's totally cool too. Um, because it's just gonna cover up the line anyway. And then when you're done, people won't even know like where the line was. So it really doesn't matter if you go over the lines or not. It does help to like practice staying in the lines though, because then um, in the future, if you do like more complicated pictures, um, that practice can really come into handy. All right. And then I'm gonna go on ahead and do the same thing on this side. like when we were drawing it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical on both sides just do your best and I find it really helps when you're going like against a line or around a curve if you kind of just follow it with the brush really long strokes and then when you're filling in you kind of want to use these short choppy kind of strokes to really get in all the little cracks and fill in all that little white space. All right, now that I got 
got those two lined. Um, I'm gonna work a little bit quickly because I don't want my paint um, to dry up too much on me. I'm actually not going to clean my brush off. Um, this is really rare. You normally do want to clean off your brush in between colors, but I'm not going to because we're going to be blending um, to make this rainbow effect. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the tip of my brush and we're going to get a little bit of red on it from our palette. And I'm going to go along this edge of this line right here that I just made. And now I'm really focused on blending this purple and red together. So it's not going to be completely a red color. It's going to really be like this deep, rich, reddish purple color. And I'm just kind of blending it out along the line again with those short kind of choppy brush strokes. This is a really good chance for you to practice your blending techniques if you do paint a lot. Blending is one of my favorite things to do and I think it's really key to making something and a lot of paintings look realistic because you don't really want um, like these harsh lines against each other. You really want to blend things out as best you can. I'm going to get some more and go on ahead and do that same thing on the other side. Just along this whole line here. And again, acrylic paint actually dries very quickly um, compared to other types of paint, especially oil. Oil takes days to dry. Um, in comparison, acrylic only takes about 10 minutes or less. Um, so that's why I'm working a little bit quickly because the more, the wetter it is, the easier it is to blend this. But if you need to pause the video and take a chance to catch up, that's totally fine too. And if your purple does start to um, dry up on you a little bit, you can go back in and get some more purple on your brush and mix, you know, right on the page, mix the purple and the red up together. And that's, that'll work too. So that's just an easy way to get, um, if your paint dries up on you too quickly and you want to get it wet again, just get some more color. So as you can see now I am cleaning my brush off for the next color because now there was purple on it and I don't want purple to run in um, with the next set of um, stripes that I'm going to blend because now I have this the purple and then this purplish red color so next I'm going to go ahead and do like pure bright red and I don't want any purple on my brush when I'm doing that but I'm still gonna try to blend the line of what I just did with it. As you'll see as I go along this line here. I don't wanna bring it too far down because I don't want it to go into the purple territory. <laughs> but I'm just gonna go red right along the line there. And you can play around with how much paint is actually on your brush. Sometimes it's easier when there's more paint. Sometimes it's easier when there's less paint. For me right now, this is a little bit easier with less paint on it to blend that all out. And I'm kind of going up and down along that line I just made to get that blending really nice. Cause see now I really like how this red is like going from the dark up to the light. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. off the brush with the bright red. Get that along the line first. And now I'm going to go ahead and blend half the line when there's less paint on the brush. That's a good technique to do too. So again, just play around with how much paint you actually put on your brush. Because if you don't have enough paint, then you can't really get the white spots out. And if you got too much, then it can be really hard to blend colors like you want. You need to get a little bit more here in this area. There we go. Awesome. Looking good. Oh, now it's a little bit more. 
more on this side, so I'm gonna come back on this side with some more red. I'm kind of trying to make <laughs> as even as I can on both sides. Now, again, I'm not going to clean my brush off in between because I'm going to blend now into this orange. I'm going to blend this all along the line, just like how we did that purple with the red. bring your brush upwards. That can help you get in there as well. Or even kind of a circling motion. I do that a lot too. Sometimes it's hard to realize what I'm actually doing with my brush, so it's kind of weird to describe it in words, but that's what I'm doing. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean it off. Now I'm going to do just regular orange. My orange is already, um, on my palette, is already kind of reddish. So it's not going to look too yellowish. But that's fine with me. Because then I'm going to blend it into yellow anyway. The last time I cleaned my brush off, I didn't get all the moisture off. Um, but sometimes it's okay to leave a little bit of water on there because then you can, um, it almost, it kind of starts to turn it into a watercolor. So if you do like working with watercolor, um, that can help you fill in the white spaces a little bit, but then sometimes it takes the pigment out and it makes it not as vibrant. So in that case, you can also wipe it off you know, dab some of that moisture off before you go back in and use more of your orange so that you bring that pigment back in. Okay, so now I still got a little bit of orange left on my brush and I'm going to fade it into like a yellowish orange now. And yellow is a color, it takes a lot of it um, to really show the color, so you might have to use more yellow than you think to really lighten this orange up. And I'm also going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the section with this, like orange is yellow. go over the lines like this line of the body with it like I did here with just a little bit um that's totally fine because we're gonna go back and fill this in with black and black is obviously <laughs> dark enough that it's going to you know cover up all the little flaws that you might have underneath it I'm gonna get more yellow and go ahead and do it on this side as well blending blending a lot of yellow, a 
lot more than you think to lighten things up. Yellow is really tricky to work with. Now I'm kind of pulling it a little bit too far down, but that's okay. You can also use, um, if you feel like it, you can use your finger kind of to wipe it off or to blend too. I'm going to wipe some of that yellow I just put on there. You can kind of clean your finger off. And clean your brush again. And then I think we're going to go on ahead and do this upper section now. So with the upper section, I'm going to make sure I get the moisture out of my brush first here. And we're going to start with plain yellow. here. Just like how we started the purple, just going to make a line across, not too high up, but you know, high enough that we can actually see that there's a yellow line there. Same thing on this side. around the collar wheel a little bit at a time. We did our purple here, we did our purple red blending, and we did our orange, our orange red blending of course, and then we did our orange yellow blending here, and then we've done our yellow. So now we're going to do our yellow green blending. So with the yellow still on the brush, a little bit of green. Don't get, really try not to get too much green on here because again it takes a lot of yellow make the yellow pop. So we don't want to overwhelm it with this green. We just want a little bit of green on the brush, not very much at all. As we go ahead along this line, see even I think I might have got too much. And we're going to blend it as best we can. This is going to be the tricky part. Don't be afraid to go back if you need to get some more yellow on your brush. bring it the blending too far down because I still want to have a stripe of yellow there too. Just a little bit. I'm gonna get yellow and green on my brush and go on this side. Might be a little bit uneven in the wings, but that's all right with me. Okay. Now we go ahead and clean the brush out again so that we can do our green next. Bright, bright green along that line. I would do along the line first and then kind of blend it down from there. Again, we don't want to overwhelm that pretty yellowish green we just made with our blending techniques. So we're going to do the green stripe and then from there kind of blend it downwards. Just a little bit along the edge so it makes this really pretty ombre effect. That's what we're really going for this whole thing. And then I still have quite a bit of wing to fill out, so I am going to go on ahead and make kind of a bigger, like a wider uh, green stripe here. much on my brush. <laughs> We're going to kind of 
kind of fill it out first before I do the blending. So I don't blend too much green down. gonna wipe my brush a little bit. I got too much paint on it there. Now, again, not really rinsing the brush off this time. We're going to move into blue. We're gonna make like a, hopefully this turns out pretty, a blue-green here. clean it again and wipe all that moisture off and now we're gonna do plain blue above that not going to fill out the rest of the wing with the blue normally I would but since I have a little bit left over I'm going to start back over on my wheel and after I do this blue I'm going to do a little bit of a blue purple to fill out the rest of it. Again try to stay in the lines as best you can but if you go over that's totally fine. Um, this is a good time to practice staying in the lines though. Even if you mess up, it's fine because we will go back and fill all this in with black in a little bit. So don't beat yourself up if you go over the lines, but it is a good time to practice staying in as much as you can. Again, with blue still kind of on my brush, I'm going to get some more purple, and I'm going to fill out the rest of this with this bluish, a little bit of bluish purple to fill out the rest of the wing. That's totally fine. <laughs> I won't beat myself up about it. See, even us professionals, <laughs> as professionals, I'd like to think I am. We mess up too all the time. At least I don't. I do. I don't know about other professionals, but I totally do. <laughs> And I'm not afraid to admit it. Put some more blue there to cover up my white spots. Aha. And 
I think that looks really good for our color portion. I'm gonna clean our brush off. Oh, my brush off, you can clean off yours too. And you can pause if you need to catch up or you know, do what you need to do to get to this point. And then we're going ahead and we're going to get our black out. And now this part is going to be a little bit of kind of um, fill in the blanks, color by number, <laughs> whatever you want to call. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my colors aside because I think we're done with them right now. Um, I think the rest of it is just going to be black. So I'm going to get out my black again. I use this weird house paint. <laughs> Um, and we're going to go ahead and fill in all of, you know, this body and the outline of the wings. All of that. And again, you can also use a marker if you'd rather use um, a marker to color it all in or like paint pens. I really like using paint pens um, when I use black and stuff because it's a little bit easier to work with. But since we're painting today, I'm going to use um, actual black paint and we're just going ahead and go at your own pace and you go ahead and fill all of that in. And this is another great chance to practice um, staying in the lines and getting as close to the edges as you can and making smooth long brush strokes fill it in. One thing I didn't mention um, this far, maybe I should have mentioned at the beginning, but now that we're working with this really wet black paint, I just thought of it. Um, whichever hand you use to paint with, I would start on the opposite side of the page because that way you're not um, dragging your hand into, see if I were doing this with my left hand, um, I would be dragging it into and I just got some on me. You, you see what I mean? You would be dragging your hand through the paint as you go. So if you're right-handed, I would recommend going from left to right with your painting. And if you're left-handed, going from right to left. Um, I'm actually both-handed, fun fact. <laughs> but um, I do prefer to paint with my right hand. Um, so I generally only paint with my right hand unless something happens to my right hand. So I normally go from left to right. That's just something I've learned over the years and that way you don't get paint all over your hand and you don't smear it um, across the page because you don't want to ruin your work either that way. This is the most um, calming part of the project because I'm definitely feeling the zen right now. <laughs>
going too fast for you again, it's, you can always pause the video um, and try to catch up or go at your own pace. You can even slow the video down if you want, actually. I think you can do like half speed, quarter speed or whatever. And then you can listen to my voice as it changes <laughs> tone. And then it goes really slow. <laughs> I mean, just for fun. optional final step. Now for our final step, and this is completely optional, if you're looking at your butterfly now and you're like, oh it looks so great, I don't want to risk messing it up or anything, you can totally stop now and be fine. Um, but I'm going to show you a little bit extra. We're going to make it a little bit more realistic with some um, lines. I don't know what they're actually called. I call them veins, like the veins of the butterfly. Um, also, we should probably do the antennas too. Antennae. Um, I'll go ahead and do the antenna real fast if you want to do that with me. Ugh, I don't want to get paint on my wrist. Um, just to follow the outline that we made so that it's a little bit darker and it shows up a little bit more. You don't have to do this part either if you think they look fine with the pencil marks, but when I'm painting, I don't like to leave any pencil marks behind. <laughs> and then we'll just make some dots on the ends. Alright, so there, now we got the antenna done. Um, now we're going to go ahead and do um, the veins, as we're calling them, or the lines. So this is going to be a bit of a follow-along part. Um, it's really hard, if you have a marker that you're using, you can totally use um, the spoon again <laughs> or um the ruler um to keep your lines really straight but it's really hard to do that with a paintbrush so this is going to be really free-handed for me um which is why you might want to skip this part unless you really want to take the challenge with me if you do awesome let's do this <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and just get a little bit of black paint on our brush not too much and we're going to go ahead and start making our veins and we're going to have to be kind of brave about this so just kind of follow um, my lines of what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to make one that goes like across, like all the way from here to here. And just like that. Just really try to keep your lines as thin as you can. That's why a smaller brush does work better for this. If you have even one smaller than this, that's great too. Um, but sometimes they get to be, if they're too small, then like not enough paint comes off of them at all. So I kind of do use like a small to medium, like what this is with the brush head. And then I'm going to go about, again, not really exact, but like from here, I'm going to go ahead and make a line across. And then again, down here. I don't know. I think that looks alright for that side. So I'm going to go on ahead and repeat that on the other side. I just broke my own rule of doing, instead of going left to right, I went right to left with my right hand, but oh well. <laughs> I'm going to kind of turn it a little bit because I am doing this with my right hand, so it's a little bit harder to do this side actually. Um, do the line from here. Steady, steady hand is what it takes, <laughs> I tell you. And, <laughs> which I do not really have, so this is really hard for me. Um, but we're trying. I'm gonna copy what I did on the other side with that line. And you can come up with your own design if you wanna do your own design of veins. I'm just trying to keep it simple. Just simple. Now, for the bottom section, it's gonna be a little bit harder. I 
I suppose I should start from the left this time. <laughs> I'll turn it a little bit for me. So I, if you have a marker, you can actually use your spoon with this part and I will show you how. I'm kind of just marking it with this pencil. So what I would do, what I kind of want to do for this vein is I want to do like kind of the out outline of like the end of the spoon. We kind of want to go down er, and back up. So if you have a marker, that would actually be really helpful to use right now. <laughs> but with the paintbrush, it's kind of difficult. So what we're going to do is again, go from about, about here on the wing. I'm making this a little bit thick, but that's okay. About down to here, and we're going to kind of make like a little tip. Kind of tip back. And then, I'm going to twist a little bit so it's easier. And then we're going to bring it all the way back up. All the way back up to touch the body part. And then from there, we can go on ahead and make some veins like splaying out from it. really thick. <laughs> oh well. We can go from there to there. And the end of this tip. Down. We can also go from the very tip of that. Down. We can kind of copy and then do this one on this side. Or again, do whatever kind of vein pattern you would like to do. I'm just showing you kind of what I think I wanted to do. <laughs> Again, if you have like a marker or something, you can trace the edge of the spoon. Um, but I don't have a marker right now. Well, I do, but I want to show you with paint. So we go down, freehand in it. <laughs> But sometimes freehanding it does get you the most like I guess natural results. You're probably like yeah sure whatever. <laughs> it just makes it harder because that totally makes it different on both sides of my butterfly. So it's like the wings really are not symmetrical, just like they're not symmetrical in real life, right? And so now I'm gonna do what I did before, kind of. this point down. Do the same up here. A little bit of a curve. A little bit of a curve from this point down. Uh, I'm gonna clean my brush off. And if you're still with me thus far, um, there is one more optional step to go, but again, totally optional. If you don't have the time, you can totally um, book out, peace out now. <laughs> but just one more thing that I um, thought of that we want to do, um, kind of going along with the veins, um, we're going to use white paint for this. Um, so I'm going to put my black away and I'm going to bring my palette back out. And I'm going to get my white paint. So I got my white paint ready and I'm going to go ahead and just squeeze a little bit out on here. It doesn't have to be very much. Oh, I got that was more than I needed, but oh well. <laughs> and I'll put that back away. And I'm just gonna clean my brush again just because a little bit OCD about cleaning, 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 cleaning. <laughs> Everything make it clean. All the moisture off that. So again, this is completely optional. Um, we kind of want the black. The black is drying pretty quickly for me. If your black part is not dry yet, you can go on ahead and pause, take a break for about five to ten minutes, um, just to let your um, black paint dry. And then after that, we will come back, and I'm gonna let mine dry just a little bit here, um, and then we will do the white. So the white is meant to kind of just make this a little bit more realistic. What we're gonna do. 
make sure my brush is really dry, okay? Um, we're just gonna take right on the tip of our brush. And again, um, I would do not such a small brush for this, maybe like a medium to, or this is like a small to medium one, of, which is fine too. And we're going to make some dots kind of um, around the edge of, the, not down here, but up along this side and along this side. You know, kind of along the side of the wings, because like if you look at pictures um, of actual butterflies, they do actually have that. Um, they do have little white spots on their wings a lot of times, not all of them. Um, so we're going to go ahead, and this part is really fun, and you can just kind of wing it. <laughs> oh, I had to, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you can make some bigger ones, some smaller ones. That actually, my black wasn't dry there yet, and I got a little bit on it. Just do what you want. You can make a lot of dots, a lot of tiny dots, big ones. I just kind of like to span them, put a lot kind of here at this like corner area, and then kind of span them up a little bit, and not have too many there, and then come back in on this wing, and make some more. other side do the same thing again again I'm going left to right now so I didn't break my own rule again <laughs> just keep getting a little bit more paint on your brush if you need and don't worry definitely don't worry about trying to make this even on both sides because it's not that's almost impossible to do we're just making dots at random actually the part I've noticed um, when I painted butterflies in the past and used reference pictures this is the part that like really varies like the butterfly to butterfly their dots are like never the same it's like fingerprints for them I guess um, and even that like their wings both of the wings are like they never have the same dots on them like if you were to fold their wings in half and match them up the dots would be so different really rare that I've seen them with like almost identical dots on either side. Just around that corner there. And I'm gonna clean my brush off I think one more time. Move my paint off to the side. And guys guys look at our beautiful butterflies that we did together um <laughs> there's still a little bit of a dot there i guess you can <laughs> whoopsies you can erase that if that's bothering you <laughs> that's kind of bothering me from the beginning when we marked it but you just made a total butterfly um from start to finish and it looks super like kind of realistic but also super cool with this rainbow effect and it looks awesome like honestly it looks good enough to just up and fly away <laughs> honestly um so i really hope you guys um liked doing this class with me if you did please let me know and um hopefully i can do some more um free classes like this in the future um we'll see if i get time and if i do um please feel free to comment or contact me and let me know like what like pictures or items or objects or just what type of paintings would you like to see done in the future like what would you like to do other than this lovely little butterfly we just did so please let me know and i will see you guys later so there you have it hopefully you really enjoyed this class if you did um let me know um comment and like 
that would be helpful. <laughs> um, also, again, let me know if there's any other kind of um, painting classes you would like to see in the future, possibly. Um, also, if you really did enjoy this class, I have a few um, similar painting classes that come with painting kits um, over on my Etsy shop. Um, I also sell my own paintings here. <laughs> Just a few of some of the many that you will also um, find on my Etsy. Um, you can always just go ahead and check out my Etsy for any of my paintings, any of my painting kits, and just have a good time. So, uh, until next time, later home dogs!